Hi, and welcome to Experience Cleveland County. This is Jackie Sibley Newton, your host. This is a show about the Cleveland County Chamber and our partners working together to make this a better community for you to live, work, and play. This is a broadcast service of Cleveland Community College on Time Warner Cable. You can also view our shows for a very short time on the website. If you go to Cleveland Community College website, click on C19, you'll not only see the schedule, but you'll get to see clips of the show and you can even share that with your friends on social media or however you would like. We invite you to talk with us anytime you like. You can contact me and let me know if you have a show idea or anything you'd like to see on Experience Cleveland County. As I said, I'm Jackie Sibley Newton, your host, and today our guests are Greg McIntyre with McIntyre Elder Law and Joe Seidel with Bayada Home Health. Did I get that right? Bayada Home Health Care. Home Health Care. I got it almost right. <laughs> And you guys have been out doing some great things together, not only in our community, but in our neighboring counties. My arm's are tired. <laughs> You've been I just flying flew in. around. We had a four city tour. <laughs> the Forest so. City Grand Tour. The four big city. Tour. Four city. Not four forest city. city. Yeah. Okay. Four well, city. tell me, yes. tell me what's been going Quattro on. Quattro City. Um, Joe, we started in Asheville. We did. We did a Tuesday night in Asheville, Thursday night in Morganton. The next week we did Tuesday night in Charlotte and Thursday night in Shelby. You guys have just been having a so, grand time out touring, telling absolutely. people about how to care for, not only how to make plans for their elder relatives, but how to think about how to plan for themselves. Not only living the rock star lifestyle, <laughs> but also helping seniors protect their assets and legacy. Really, it's an ed it was an educational tour mm -hmm. and I, I learned a lot um, and also, we were able to, I think, impart a lot of knowledge in different areas. Joe was really instrumental in setting that up. And what, 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 what all parts did we cover there, Joe? We, uh, we, we ended up reaching well over 100 people at these four different events. And so we, we talked about home care services. What is home care? How does it get paid for? Um, you know, uh, terminology that you would look for in an insurance policy to know whether you might have the benefits or not. Um, then, and then on the part about paying for it, then we talked, uh, uh, Greg talked about, you know, uh, preserving assets, uh, different ways to, to uh, you know, pay for home care, how to, how to, um, how to move your funds around to be able to, to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And then we, at each of the cities, we also had a, a long-term care insurance representative that talked about long-term care insurance and, and uh, they, they presented several different plans, but uh, really all of it was about, you know, as we look at the aging population, you know, there are 10,000 people a day who are turning 65. Mm -hmm. The over 85 population is the fastest growing population in the country. Wow. And when you start to look at those numbers and the needs that those individuals have, right. um, those, the, the, the care for individuals be, is beginning to grow exponentially. And so, we, we also know there's a lot of people who don't know what's available. Right. And uh, so that was really a, a big part of our, uh, of our four city tour, was really trying to help people understand, you know, how it gets paid for, what benefits are available. One, one of the things, and, and Greg is a certified uh, VA uh, representative, but one of the things we talked about is most veterans don't have a clue what, what they're services are to. what they're entitled to, right. and uh, so we talked about the VA benefits, and, and, and Greg, being the certified representative, could certainly talk more in detail about that. But um, you know, even dealing with my own parents who live down in Florida, and I'm, I'm living here, I go down to Florida. And my right. mom was deteriorating. I'd, I'd 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 visit with my mom and dad, and I'd say, uh, "Do you guys know that you have this service available?" Uh, no, didn't know anything about that. You know, dad, you're a veteran. You can get services for mom. And yeah, I didn't know that. And you know, here I am, I'm in the industry and my own parents don't even know yeah. uh, what, what's available. So th those were some of the things we really were trying to highlight as we, as we did the, the four city tour. So. so the two of you partnered and then also an insurance agent that could explain some options that they had as well. So it was a well-rounded, all-inclusive event really yeah we really we really partnered with uh edward jones and okay. uh, jamie richards really was very instrumental in helping line up all the different speakers 
And uh, so we really appreciate Jamie's effort in that. But uh, instead of Jamie speaking at this event, he had a, a long-term care representative speak. So a uh, lot of really good uh, information. We also had a vendor fair at each location. Uh, we had a hospice agency. We had geriatric care managers. Uh, we had another VA representative. Uh, we had our, our biota simulation lab. Uh, Greg had, a, had his booth there. We had a biota booth. Um, so we really tried to have this vendor fair that uh, enabled people to connect with other services that provide home care in a community. So, and the vendor fair was really, really well received. I can imagine that that was very beneficial. Now, how did you let people know that, that this was happening? How did you get that audience that really needed this information? How did you get that out? Yeah, we, um, we really kind of, our, our target market was really about the 45 to 65 year old female. Because in this world, the, the females make the decisions. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it's typically the daughter or the daughter-in-law of the person who needs the services. Mm -hmm. So um, we did a social media campaign. Greg and I per, uh, per, uh, made a little infomercial. Mm -hmm. um, we had a landing page on the infomercial where people could sign up. So we did, we did social media, uh, we did email blast, we did press releases, uh, we had a couple articles in the Shelby Star. Uh, we also had one in the Morganton newspaper. Um, so that was really our, our big effort was the social media, the email blast, and, uh, and the press releases. If you didn't know it, I'm actually on Facebook. I see that every <laughs> now and then. Every now and I've then. I've just you discovered. Pop up. It. Yeah. 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 Every so, now and then. With absolutely. a video. Or two. Videos. Yeah. Or two. Three a day. Exactly. Yeah, at least. So, so, so they know you on social media. There you go. Yeah. So, but, but you know, um, um, partnering with Joe in this seminar and the work we've done in the past, the whole thing was centered around staying healthy and being able to stay at home. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, and and being able to, uh, you know, we'll, we have some great assisted living and nursing home facilities in mm -hmm. Western North Carolina, in Cleveland mm -hmm. County. Okay, um, however, mm -hmm. is that your first choice, or should you plan to stay, you know, at at home, uh, mm -hmm. and and make that an option? I mean, who out there right now would raise their hand and say, oh, that's, you know, the, the first choice is to go to a nursing home exactly. or assisted living. You may find yourself or your family may say, you know, this is the required option. Your right. physician may say that, okay? Mm -hmm. But until then, can we figure out a way to protect the assets, still have health care options, like staying home and being cared for mm -hmm. just like you would um, even up to ICU care, I know, I've talked to Joe at length about this, and yeah. it's amazing. When he says that they had a demonstration lab or, or a lab, simulation lab, they have this, uh, this mannequin that's computerized that they work with with their nurses. Oh, really? That's really cool to train. Um, they can even provide um, in-home uh, ventilator care, up to ICU level care in home. Wow. And those are the things that when you look at the financial component with your advisor, so you check in with your financial advisor as to, you know, how's my money right now? What if, you know, a serious health care scare happened in my family with myself or my, or my wife or husband, you know, with, with one of us? Um, and, you know, what if we added some type of long-term care component to that to pay to have a stay at home but still protect our assets? You know, hey, you know, from me, it's, hey, Greg, how, how could I possibly you know, add some legal protection to the assets and still pass it down to our family, yet be able to access really, really great home care through someone like Bayada Home, home Health Care. But I know, Joe, Joe that's a, there's a softball. <laughs> I mean, I know you could hit that one out of the park because that's what you're passionate about. And that's what you guys do. Yeah, I, I've been in the long-term care industry for 30 years. I've worked in nursing homes, retirement communities, assisted living, and it was all great. Uh, but I, I began to have a real conviction that people wanted to be at home. And mm -hmm. so, so I purposed to get into home care. And uh, I've been in home care now for the last 12 years, 13 years. And uh, you know, I, I just love the opportunity to sit down and talk with people and find a solution for them where they can stay in the comfort of their own home. Right. You know, uh, that, that you know, home is, you know, that, that's where our heart's at and, and that's where mm -hmm. we'd like to stay if at all possible. You know, you can, uh, you know, you're, it's, it's a familiar surrounding. You home know, is where my remote is. 
is where the remote is. Yeah. Well, they have so. pets. You know, sure. They have neighbors that they're close to. Nobody right. wants to leave all of that and go. It's got to be mentally healthier for them to stay where they're comfortable. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and again, not uh, uh, not being negative about nursing homes, because again, I, I enjoyed that environment. Mm -hmm. I loved working in that environment and worked in some great and facilities. And sometimes that really is an only and, and option. And sometimes it is the only option. Um, but you know, the the health benefits are, you know, the, the, the psychosocial benefits of staying in your own home. Mm -hmm. The health benefit, you know, infections are greatly reduced because there's only one person, yeah. you know, in, in the home that, uh, yeah. and so, you know, there's a lot of real benefits from, uh, you know, not only the, the psychosocial aspect, but the health, the health side of it as well. And uh, as, as Greg mentioned, our, our, our services range at, at Bayada, um, I mean, we, we, we go from pediatrics to geriatrics okay. and everybody in between. Uh, we, we've specialized our offices, and, and, uh, but at one point in time in Shelby, we had a one-year-old and a 103-year-old. Wow. And we had everybody in between. And so, uh, and in that, we take care of people with, you know, some of their basic needs. They might just need some laundry done, some housekeeping, mm -hmm. uh, maybe run errands with them. Maybe take them to a doctor so we can, you know, we can we can call the the daughter who lives in Florida right. and says, you know, uh, your mom just went to the doctor. Here's what the doctor said, uh, because sometimes we can get confused about what the doctor said. Yeah, <laughs> and at, so any get, at, at any age, at any age. Not listen so, to everything the So 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 getting an accurate uh, getting an accurate report. Uh, you know, we help with bathing, dressing, uh, ambulating, toileting, uh, you know, all those kind of things, and then we go up to. You know the very in-depth care where we're taking care of people on, on with tracheostomies and ventilators, mm -hmm. and you know, and we can be in a home from anywhere from a couple hours a day to 24 hours a day, and so there's a, a broad range of, of what we do in, in that time that we're there. Wow, so. it's a world of knowledge. It's something that people. It's not one of those things that you really want to think about, but you need to think about and be be planning for it. Be ready. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and learn more about Bayada Home Health Care and my guitar uh, law firm. <laughs> One of the great things about movies is how many different types of movies get made. We try to cover all of that on Meet Me at the Movies. Unfortunately, I'm hampered somewhat by the fact that Inslee's taste is just awful. What do you mean my taste is just awful? Just because I enjoy a movie that you can watch in less than five hours and doesn't have subtitles for languages that don't even really exist. The Japanese so totally exist. Anytime it's black and white, your eyes roll back in your head. You know the reason he doesn't like 3D? He just can't handle things flying at his face, which he's about to find out about <laughs> once those cameras go off. I don't rent to psychos. Wacko. Nut job. I can't work with him. He's a lunatic. Stay away from her. She's crazy. Maniac. Bad people with mental illness get called a lot of mean names. Considering one out of five Americans experience some form of mental illness, we might have some more appropriate names to suggest. To learn more, call this number or visit this website today. Hi, I'm Linda Hopper, and I'm excited about Woman to Woman right here on C19 TV. Each month, my guests and I would chat about issues relating to women in general, but with a special focus on women right here in Cleveland County. Our topics were ranged from serious issues such as domestic violence and workplace challenges to fun topics such as fashion and healthy lifestyles and much, much more. So please join me as we discuss the issues, interests, and inspiration of women everywhere on Woman to Woman.
Welcome back to Experience Cleveland County. I'm Jackie Sibley Newton, your host. We're talking with Greg McIntyre from McIntyre Elder Law and Joe Sadell from Bayada Home Health Health Care. <laughs> Getting it out. <laughs> I have bronchitis, so thank you for bearing with my voice today. And uh, we were talking a little bit about. You should have been screaming at me during the break. I <laughs> could. Yeah, that was what did it right there. It's all that loud screaming I did before. Um, what we were talking about was what to what do people often mis, misunderstand? What do they think is going to happen that probably isn't? Um, one thing that I thought of is if my mom has my name on the deed of her house, does that automatically mean I get the house? What what are some things that people think happen a certain way that just don't? Yeah, or or um, the questions that I get all the time, which are. Um, Hey, do you do wheels? That's my Larry the Cable guy. <laughs> yes, we actually do wheels, okay? Um, but if I've sat down with you and talked about asset preservation as a senior mm -hmm. and all we're doing is passing everything by will, I probably haven't done you a good service. I haven't done my job, okay? okay? Because, you know, as you mentioned, how do you own that property with your mom? Are you co-owners? Is it, you know, default in North Carolina would be tenants in common. So that means that her part goes through the will right? Mm -hmm. um, or your part, you know, just however things shake down. And, and, and um, um, if that happens, there's a reason that you publish a will, for instance, in the paper for 90 days. It's because liens can come in and attach, okay? Right. And if we want to avoid that, then we might want to look at some other ways to pass property or own property, like life estate deeds mm -hmm. or a newer deed that's been uh, available in North Carolina for the last few years, a ladybird deed, which can help protect and pass a home, okay, and mm -hmm. keep it in the family, um, uh, and and avoid, you know, Medicaid spend downs that end up attacking the home or taking the home in the end when they pass through the will and being sold okay. to pay, say, a Medicaid lien that came in to pay for some type of long term care situation, okay? So and those are situations that. People just don't know until they're faced with it. And, and it's an emotional it's decision. To to it's an emotional that. decision. Right. It's something that's hard to think about, our own mortality, okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, that goes right along with another question I get asked all the time. It's, hey, Jackie, when's a great age for me to, when's the right age for me to start giving away my property? What do you think? I don't know. Because I get that question I mean, life, all the time from seniors because life, they want to start giving. Quality of life is different for different people. You know, somebody might be 80 and be completely bedridden. Somebody might be 80 and completely active. I say so it's say? never a great age <laughs> yeah. to start giving away your assets. Exactly. Right? I mean, I'm working my fingers to the bone you know, to, <laughs> to support myself and my six children, right? And my wife too. Yeah. Um, and she supports me too. I'm just saying to support our family. We're both working very hard to support our right. family. At what age are we going to say, hey, we want to give our home away or we want to give everything away? Yeah. I don't think there's going to be an age. We want to preserve hold on things to that till you're so that our children <laughs> hopefully are hardworking, yeah. but, but that we preserve some assets to give them a better lot in life, you know, mm -hmm. and help them. And they don't just go away or, or get spent down the way we don't want them to, right. um, but uh, uh, but but I, I think I think keeping leverage. I think the kids, no matter how good they are, are nicer to mama when she <laughs> still owns and controls everything. I really yeah. mean that, and I've seen, you know, a little money in a family be like blood in the water to, for sharks. Okay, yeah. and really disrupt a harmonious family situation. Those are the things we want to think about. Yeah. Those are the things we talk about when I sit down with a family. And, you know, I'd rather sit down with the whole family. You know, if, if there are decision makers in the family, if it's mom and, and they're, her children, mm -hmm. let's all sit around the conference table or wherever we've got to meet and, and, uh, and talk about how to, what their goals are, number one. Let's mm -hmm. identify those. And then is it to send the grandkids to college? Is it to save the family farm? Is it to access health care options like home care? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those components. Maybe I make a referral to uh, someone to look at that long-term care insurance component. Mm -hmm. Well, I also look to preserve assets and make the fa family farm stay in the family. And then, you know, we set up an asset situation that ensures paying for in-home care so that there's not a situation where all assets are spent down and nursing home or assisted living becomes the only option. 
Yeah. So that's that's a little bit about uh, you get a little bit of the flavor of of what I do and how I look at a senior situation, yeah. and at what age we should start looking at it. I think you need to start. We were talking during the break, maybe in your 40s, thinking about down the road would be nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but especially, you know, my target market, for instance, my clients are not only people in their senior years, right, 65 plus, mm -hmm. for instance, but also their children and grandchildren who are really vested in this whole um, taking care of mom and dad. Mm -hmm. What's happening to the assets? How are we going to preserve them? How are we going to have health care options? So those are, you know, everybody's involved, uh, I think, from the children to the, to the parents and, and grandparents. And, uh, and, and that's the top, or that's the whole holistic approach, if you will, to elder law that we take. So, I think there's no. a lot of benefit in, in having that well thought out. You're right, mm -hmm. it's not a comfortable subject, but at the same time, you don't want to be trying to deal with these things through emotion if something happens. You don't want to try to be making those decisions without any forethought or, you know, maybe maybe your parent can't even communicate with you at that point to, to tell you what it is they want. And at that point, do they have, is, is a general durable power of attorney in place so that even assets can be saved or moved or preserved or, mm -hmm. or healthcare power of attorney where the right person's making healthcare decisions. Those are things you want to think of ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, perhaps a living will where you want to take that end of life most important decision off the shoulders of children, yeah. that guilt ridden decision. Um, so I think uh, it is an emotional decision, but there's a lot more cost, both emotionally and monetarily, to plan in, in, a, in, a, in an emergency, right, down right. the road, than to go ahead and pre-plan um, ahead of time. So. Yeah. yeah, when we talk about those emotional decisions, you know, I remember a, a lady here in Cleveland County was looking at uh, some services for her mom, and I sat down and talked with her for an hour and a half. I think she went through every emotion imaginable to man. She was angry, you know, because, you know, she didn't like the circumstance her mom was in. She was guilty. She was, uh, she was joyful that she <coughs> finally found an option. Um, you know, and, and, and then there's, there was joy in, re, in the memories of, of her mom. And I mean, we went from tears to laughter to, um, you know, and, and, and some of those emotional decisions, you know, are, are very, very tough on, on people. Um, you know, I, I remember when I was younger, I worked, in, I worked in nursing homes, but my mom made all of us children promise, <coughs> never put me in a nursing home. <coughs> and so we all made that promise, we all made that commitment to her. Um, she was in the hospital. And it was down in Jacksonville, Florida, I went down to see her. And I'm, I, all my brothers and sisters were there, and, and the doctor said she's got to go to a facility. And <coughs> we were like, I know that's not what mom wants to do. Me having the experience in the industry, I was the one. They said, well, why don't you